بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيف توفيق تو كنتينيو رستدي أف لب اللباب بيست آن تيشنجز أف اللام تبا تبا رحمة الله عليه we are still in the beginning of the book and the main reason for these discussions is to give us a general outlook of a spiritual journey and what a wayfarer goes through uh, when we are more familiar with this uh, whole world of a spirituality then we will move into the practical side of the book inshallah the last point that we had was an explanation of the Quranic concept of Wajhullah and the fact that wayfarers become Wajhullah Wajhullah is a concept that we find it in Islam, in Christianity and Judaism. Face of God. Waj means face. It's obvious that God doesn't have physical body, so he doesn't have physical face. But we have to understand what face means what Vaj means. Why Vaj is called Vaj? Vaj comes from the, uh, the same root as Jaha. Vaj, Jaha, Mawajaha, Ittijah, all are from the same root, which means side, direction. Whenever you have encounter with something, so you have to find what's the best direction for encounter. Part of it is based on you. Part of it is based on the other side. For example, if I want to have good encounter with someone if the human being I cannot turn my back to them I have to turn my face to them because for a human being his face which has eyes and tongue and ears is the best place for encounter and also for the other party if you want to encounter him again, the best is to direct yourself towards their face. So face to face is the best encounter for two human beings. But if I want to, for example, have a best encounter with a computer or with a television, I should face their screen. If I want to encounter a flower, I can face it from 
different directions if that for example rose flower is heading towards the sky you can uh, turn from right left but for example if you look at the bottom of the flower and you just see the I don't know leaves or the branches etc this is not good encounter with the flower now what is Vajhullah? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no physical face so he doesn't need to look at us with his face we also don't need to look at his physical face anything that can put us in touch with him in contact with him anything that can direct us towards him anything that can give us good encounter with him is Vajullah and since he is the same everywhere then it only relies on us he's everywhere he's not in the uh, for example uh, above or below or right or left he's everywhere where you are ready to find him wherever you turn to find him he is there but if I am heedless or my mind is absent even in the mosque I don't find him even in prayer I don't find him even if I go next to Kaaba I don't find him because I have to turn towards him wherever you turn your face that's face of God okay this is about Vajhullah and we should seek face of God Ibtigha Vajhullah is a concept again in Abrahamic faith to seek the face of God means you are looking for best encounter with him you want to find him you want to see him now here there is a point a kind of Quranic uh, reasoning here on the one hand we all know as we said last week Allah says that the martyrs those who are killed for the sake of God they are not dead we should not think that they are dead don't think that those who are killed for the sake of God they are dead they are alive close to the Lord and they receive sustenance Please remember this which means they are close to their Lord either alive close to their Lord or receiving sustenance where it is close to the Lord or both of them anyway they are in the Rabbihim. they are close to the Lord which is the maximum nearness to God we don't have anything more than in the Rabbihim. in the Rabbihim or Lada Rabbihim means very near we cannot say Ma'a Rabbihim it's Shirk because no one is next to Allah but we can say in the Rabb then we have this ayah in Surah Qasas verse 88 which says Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha everything is perishing expiring except his face so Vajhullah is not perishing anything else is going to perish then 
In the ayah 96 of Surah Nahl, Allah says, Ma indakum yanfad wa ma indallahi baq. Whatever is with you, close to you, near you, yanfad, expires. And whatever is near God remains, endures. So, if you put these two verses together, كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَهُ And مَا عِنْدَكُمْ يَنْفَدْ وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ بَاقْ We realize that what is وَجْهُ اللَّهِ is عِنْدَ اللَّهِ and it is باقي, it remains. So, to be عِنْدَ اللَّهِ and to be face of God and to be baqi, to remain, are together. Then go back to the ayah that we had, ayah 169 of Surah Al Imran. We said, Martyrs are ahya'un inda rabbihim. So since they are inda rabbihim, wa ma inda Allah baq. Whatever is with God is remaining. And since everything other than Vajhullah is Halik, therefore these martyrs who are in the law and are Baqi, they are also Vajhullah, or if you want to make it plural, Vajuhullah. Each of them is Vajhullah, it's face of God. So this shows that a wayfarer would reach the level of remaining in God or life in God or al baqa'u billah so first al fana they are going through annihilation everything that they have which is worldly is going to be dropped then they will remain in God Then we go to the verses 26 and 27 of chapter 55, and I ask you to study this verse. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانٍ Everything on the earth is going to finish, is, in, you know, is mortal, is expiring. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ And face of your Lord remains. The same thing. But here, then we have an ending which is extra. Vajhu Rabbik is described here with Dhul Jalal wal Ikram. We expect normally that Dhul Jalal wal Ikram to be used for God. Allah is Dhul Jalal wal Ikram. And maybe some people who don't know Arabic, they think Dhul Jalal wal Ikram is adjective for Rabb. Wajhu Rabbik. And this Rabb is Dhul Jalal wal Ikram. But no one says this because Dhu is Marfu'ah. Rabb is Majroor. Dhul Jalal is Adjective for Vajh, not for Rab. Not only Rab is Dhul Jalal wal Ikram, his Vajh is also Dhul Jalal wal Ikram. Jalal means glory, Ikram means honor or honoring. So it means that Vajhullah has attributes of glory and beauty attributes of jalal and jamal so don't be surprised if we say that for example ma'soom the one who is infallible is ismullah or as plural we say ma'soomin are Asma'ullah. Because what does Is mean? Is is a sign. Something that indicates to a reality. 
those things which are wajhullah they exhibit they manifest attributes of glory and beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so wajhullah has names of God attributes of God and those who are martyrs they are wajhullah so they are so names of God a wayfarer who has got rid of his ego and has spiritually died voluntarily died means has got rid of his lusts and whims he is also Wajhullah and Zul Jalal wal Ikram of course they don't have anything of themselves they are totally dependent on Allah they are poor just they are signs and manifestations of God and some are better than others some manifest Allah better some manifest only maybe one aspect one quality maybe some more quality then to different degrees so to what extent something manifests God is different Asma'ullah Atama those which are complete names of God are insan kamil they are perfect human beings and nothing in this creation of Allah can manifest him like insan kamil insan kamil should have both sides of Jamal and Jalal beauty and glory developed flourished so they resemble Allah in a comprehensive way of course with limits it's comprehensive in the same in the sense that they have knowledge they have power they have irada they have mercy etc but there is a limit because they are finite beings so it's like a small uh, replica a small uh, a scale manifestation of Allah a mirror that reflects for example Sun it shows Sun in its entirety the whole circle but very a small very limited but it's the whole Sun this is insana Kamil nothing in this creation of Allah can reflect him as insana Kamil and therefore this is why insana Kamil can be Hoja of Allah, wise servant of Allah on the earth. So this is the next point, and after that he says, when Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam have said Nahnu Asma Allah, even the Imams alayhimussalam have said Nahnu Asma Allah. It should be known that this doesn't refer to their you know position as a political leader as a worldly leader as a governor as you know their governance or any socio-political position that is there sometimes maybe exercise maybe sometimes not exercise when there is no support but what is more important and what makes them Asma'ullah is not their socio-political position is being manifestation of Allah's attributes being in the position of not seeing themselves having no ego reaching the position of annihilation and then remaining in God having life in God this is the most important position to be Khalifa or not to be a political leader or not may happen may not happen and even if it happens that's not the main thing it's not that Amir al muminin in those five years that he was Khalifa and was a political leader of the society his um, rank 
in a spirituality or nearness to Allah increased or before that he didn't have this uh, position of nearness to God and then he got it no that's a responsibility that's a task otherwise their own degree of nearness to Allah and their own degree of perfection is not affected by this if they can do something good with this position responsibility they would take it as a blessing as an opportunity to help to bring people to truth to justice as he said to Ibn Abbas the value of this governance is less than these shoes that are repaired unless I can establish had done the religious ruling as you know bring justice give rights of people to them etc okay alhamdulillah this discussion finished now the next which is related to this is and little by little we are going towards the practical side but not very soon but we are getting there he says one of the most important things in a spiritual journey or wayfaring which is a zarura which is a necessity please remember this is a necessity this is not a you know a kind of privilege or advantage or you know recommendation it's a necessity is muraqaba muraqaba and raqaba means to be raqib raqib means to watch someone who is watching prophet isa alayhi salam said to allah falamma tawaffaytani kunta anta raqib alayhim when you raised me you were monitoring them and watching them raqib or raqibun atid as we have in the quran so this is a necessity then the author says that from the first step the wayfarer should observe muraqaba till the last step muraqaba is always needed and this is a decisive requirement yaki az lawazim hatmiye is very necessary Muraqaba has different degrees because what are you going to check? You know, sometimes I give a list of one or two or five or ten things to someone and say, no, please check. For example, check the temperature, check the humidity, check the noise, check the light. I can ask many things to be checked a wayfarer has to check himself with respect to different things and little by little this becomes more severe more uh, precise deeper maybe at the beginning you just make sure that you don't commit any sins you do your watch about you check yourself about obligations but then it reaches the point little by little that you would prohibit for yourself anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning to have halal permissible pleasure engagement is fine in the beginning but little by little it reaches the point that you should not think of anything other than God let alone to have any uh, interest any pleasure attached to anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he makes a very important point here he says we should not expect from someone in a lower degree 
to have the same level of muraqab as someone who is in higher degree. If you impose very high level of muraqaba on someone who is lower or a be beginner, they may even get confused or they may even go away and you know lose interest. They may be overwhelmed by this. It's a gradual process. It's very important. This is why we need wisdom, this is why we need you know experience, we need mentors. Not to expect too much, but also not to remain for end of your life just at the level of beginners and just be concerned about halal and haram, wajib, you know, etc. You have to go higher. <laughs> Many things that, as I said in the beginning, are permissible, little by little, can become haram. In one of our du'as, we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Astaghfirullah or Astaghfiruka, I ask forgiveness from you for what? For any pleasure without your remembrance or any pleasure not coming from your remembrance. Something like this, أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ لِكُلِّ لَذَّةٍ بِغَيْرِ ذِكْرِكَ Any pleasure which was not with your remembrance. But this is not for beginners. So even if I enjoy a delicious food, for me it might be okay and actually I may need that for example, but if I am more advanced, this is not good. That I get my pleasure from something like just food. But we have to be very careful again. This is not something to expect from everyone. This is not something, you know, maybe to teach to everyone. But we should know that we can reach that position. Even some mystics, they later regret even the pleasure that they get from some acts of worship. For example, you know, they have asked forgiveness for saying prayer because they enjoyed prayer <laughs> as such. Uh, they think that even this was a little bit or maybe more than a little bit for them not being focused on God. They did something for their own pleasure. Some mystics have said this. So, little by little this muraqaba increases and when muraqaba becomes a strong, then signs of love for Allah will start appearing. As long as we are attached to material things and worldly things, lazza of nearness to Allah, love for Allah are not that much sensed. But when you detach yourself, empty yourself, you have muraqaba, then little by little love for Allah will emerge. This love is in us as part of our fitrah, but unfortunately it's covered by worldly attachments. Then he says that with muraqaba, gradually hijab, whales, become weaker and finally they totally go away and that fitri, that innate love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would become active, would become strong 
and would direct us towards Allah who is the source of Jamal wa Kamal the source of beauty and perfection this muraqaba that leads to having strong love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called May vine and then he quotes this poem به پیر میکده گفتم که چیست راه نجات I asked the old man of the tavern Peer normally stands for someone who is wise, experienced, a sage. Make a day is where they give, serve wine, tavern. So here means the teacher or for example the a spiritual mentor, the guide that he had. He says, I ask him, what is the path, the way to salvation, Najat, salvation. Bekhast jam meyo goft raz pushi dan. He called he called a cup of wine for a cup of wine and said secrets are to be kept secret Raz Pushidan is to cover the secrets means you have to keep them confidential so the path of salvation is to keep secrets confidential Normally, the reason we make things known to others is lack of capacity and sometimes interest in fame, interest in being respected by people, etc. But these are secrets which are very important and we should not share with other people. In the same way that, uh, for example, a lover and beloved they may have many secrets between them they wouldn't share with others with aghyar there must be a ghira ghira is that you want to protect your beloved and the relation the secrets anything around the beloved from others from outsiders from aghyar it's ghira so we should not share everything. There are many things to say about this issue of keeping things confidential, but I don't have time. In the series on followership, in one session we talked about this issue that it's very important that we are able to keep things confidential when confidentiality is a sign of dedication and respect sometimes no we have to share sometimes we have to keep confidential in another poem it says rah khalwat gah khasam binama ta pas az in mai khoram ba tu wo digar gham duniya nakhoram Khalvatgah means a place of being lonely. Yeah, where you can go and be alone. It's very important for a spiritual uh, wayfarer to have a place where he can be only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Normally, every person wants to be alone with their beloved. in that beautiful hadith uh, a 
about Salatul Layl, uh, Allah says, Kadaba man za'ama annahu yuhubbuni. Faida jannahu layl nama anni. Those who think they love me, but when night comes and embraces them, they sleep without paying attention to me. Nama anni. It's very beautiful. Nama anni means they sleep turning away from me. Every lover would look for opportunity to be able to have no distraction, no uh, visitor, etc. to be alone with the beloved. How can someone says he loves me or she loves me and then in the night he or she just sleeps. So Khalwatga means a place that you can be alone. Khas means a special, exclusive. So Rah Khalvatga Khasam Binama. Please show me the way, the path to that place for being lonely. In the translation, it says, lead me into my solitary privacy. Tau pasazin, so that from now on, mei khuram ba tovu diyar qame dunya nakhuram. So show me where is your place of solitary. I be with you, no one else. And I would drink wine with you. And then after that, no longer I would sense pain for dunya. The translate, uh, translation is this. Thereafter I with thee may drink sweet wine and think no more of the world's bitter woes which means suffering deep suffering because when you are drinking wine then your consciousness goes down of course uh, worldly wine unfortunately <laughs> Let's our good consciousness go down. Our agl is affected. But a spiritual wine makes our concerns go down. Our worldly consciousness uh, consciousness go down, and your agl would become revived. So it is a difference between a spiritual wine and worldly wine, but. They use it as an analogy, of course. It's clear that no one is here talking about the physical wine. As in the Quran, Quran for example, about heaven also. We have, you know, in heaven, khamran ladzatan lishar. I mean, we have in heaven wine, but that wine is different from worldly wine. چون سالک در امر مراقبه موازبت نمود حق تعالی از باب مهر و اطوفت انواری را بر او به عنوان تلایع ظاهر می گردن. When the wayfarer is committed to مراقبه so he's regular and you know he keeps doing muraqaba then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his love and affection would shine on him some lights and these are beginnings talaya for the beginning it starts with some lights these lights at the beginning are like flashes like thunders you know 
They come suddenly and disappear. Little by little, they become like a stars. You know, in the night, sometimes you see there are sto stars which are very small and they have light. So they are permanent and they have some light. They are not like flash which comes and disappears. Then these uh, small uh, stars become like moon, more light. Then they become like sun. Sometimes it's like a lantern. And he says, they call this in mystical terminology, Nome Erfani. They call it mystical sleep or mystical, you know, uh, sleeping. And these lights are Barzakhi from Alam Mithal that we explained. So these are not from material world. When Muraqaba is kept and is strengthened and the wayfarer fulfills all the requirements of Muraqaba, these lights become stronger. And it can reach the point that the wayfarer would see the whole sky full of light, uh, earth full of light from the east to the west is light. This light that covers from the east to the west the sky and the earth is the light of his own nafs. Our nafs is mujarrad, is immaterial, but it is very much connected to our body. And since childhood, when we have opened our eyes, we have only seen this body. When people have talked to us, talk to our body. Everything was about this body. So we are confused. We think it's me that looks like this. It's me that has hands and, but this is only my body. Imagine if there was a clothes, a piece of clothes, for example, a hat that from childhood was always on your head. You never removed it, even for a second. Then you would have thought this is part of your, <laughs> it's always with you. So you think it's part of it like your neck, for example, like your hand. Our nafs is different from our body, but with some arguments, with philosophical arguments, we may come to know this, but to sense it is very difficult. With muraqaba, you would reach the point that your nafs would start to have tajalli, to show herself, to manifest. It reaches the point that Salik may see his nafs separate from body. Then he mentions an experience that of course, this is very uh, elementary experience for Ayatollah Qadi. The late Ayatollah Mirza Ali Agha Ghazi Tabatabai, he says, one day I came out of the room and I was in the corridor of the house and I saw myself standing somewhere silent you know sometimes for example you see people there but this time he saw himself there standing and he's silent he said I look carefully at my face and then I saw something on my face like a, I think you call mole, yeah? 
there are some brown sometimes spots so he says I saw something on my face that I had never seen before I had not noticed must be something small then he says when I went back to the room I looked in the mirror and I saw yes that was there and I had not noticed sometimes the wayfarer instead of seeing himself he would miss himself sometimes cannot find himself uh, those who have read the book uh, Ruha Mujarrad, the abstract soul maybe you have come across this uh, story that once they were in a van and they wanted there were a few people they wanted to count you know how much fare to give and uh, the late uh, Haddad Sayyid Hashim Haddad was a student of Ayatollah Qadi and the book is about him when he was counting he was not uh, finding himself he was not able to find himself people who have no such experiences they may make mockery or they may ridicule you know, this is crazy how can you not find yourself but this can happen this is a transient situation that sometimes they reach the point that they cannot find themselves they are so much attracted to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, they get rid of themselves of course those who are in a higher position then they can gain back this uh, recollection of your, themselves he says these observations are in the beginning of tajarrud and nafs when your nafs is able to really uh, uh, exercise its immateriality and not being too much affected by body and bodily engagements and initially they are limited by time and space but if wayfarer continues then they can find their complete their entire nafs without any limitation of space or time because our nafs has no space and no time our body has but nafs as soon as it's created is mujarrad it's wrong to think your nafs is in this city for example or in this house nafs has no place but nafs is fixed to this world with body body is fixed to this place and this time and body is the window for the soul to this world and unfortunately we are so much dependent on our body that only through this body we can act we can see we can hear we can uh, no, do things but soul has no a space there is no front or back or you know east west for soul then he uh, quotes this uh, story from Ayatollah Mirza Jawad Agha Maliki Tabrizi who has the book Liqa'ullah Al-Muraqabat and Imam Khomeini benefited from him uh, in Qom because after his study in Najaf he went to Qom Mirza Jawad Agha Maliki Tabrizi for 14 years was a student of Akhund Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani. Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani had a special uh, respect and trust for this student, uh, 
He had many great students and he trained many great teachers. But it is said that as far as I know, this is the only student that Mullah Hussein Qulliya Hamadani gave him the task of mentoring another person. So there was a person who was very determined. He had Azmerausek, a strong determination for a spirituality. But determination is very important. So Akhun Mullah Hussein Qulliya Hamadani asked Mirza Jawad Aghamaliki Tabrizi to be the mentor of this person. And he worked with him for six years. After six years of muraqaba and mujahada, he found him quite ready for going through tajarrud nafsi and being able to experience separation of the soul from body. But he wanted this to be done by great teacher. So he took him to Akhun Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani and said that uh, he is ready. Akhun said, this is nothing. And then with a movement of the hand, he said, Tajarud is like this. And then that student said, Immediately I saw separate from my body and I saw something like myself next to me. So this is the result of continuing muraqaba in the way of course that these great scholars have explained that inshallah we will talk about it later. He says, witnessing, seeing those beings which are barzakhi, like, you know, some of the spirits, you know, some, you know, mukashafat, etc., are not that important. But to be able to see your own nafs in its complete Tajarrud in materiality, that's the main thing. If you can see your nafs in its complete tajarrud, then you would see it's not limited to any time, any space. You would see your own nafs spread all over. And this shuhud is not juz'i, it's kulli. Juz'i means particular, means an individual, something which has time, which has a space, but this would be something which has no time and a space. The late Sayyid Ahmad Karbala'i, who was another student of Akhun Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani and who was a teacher of Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai. So we have Akhun Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani who had different students like Mirza Jawad Aghamaliki Tabrizi, like uh, Sayyid Ahmad Karbalai and then Sayyid Ahmad Karbalai had a student Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai and other students of course. So, the late Sayyid Ahmad Karbala'i says, one day I was having rest somewhere and someone awakened me and said, if you want to watch Noor Esfah Bodiye, I will explain it all. Get up. Who was that person who 
awakened him. We don't know. Maybe an angel. She had reached the point that was able to see Nur Esfah Budige. So he said, when I opened my eyes, I saw a light without any limit, without any border. There is no end. بی حد و اندازه مشرق و مغرب عالم را فرا گرفته which has embraced east and west of the world what is نور اسفح بودیه according to شیخ اشراق نور اسفح بودیه is the light of human soul he says human soul has light and this light is coming from Nurul Anwar from the light of the lights which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is above the light that we have as an animal Nur Hiwani this above that this is a mujarrat side of us our nafs which has this light and he call it Isfah Bodiyya because Sheikh Ishraq uses many uh, terms from ancient Persia and ancient Persian philosophers. So he uses this uh, expression as Isfah Budiyya, means Nur Nafs. So Sayyid Ahmad Karbalai Rahmatullah Lai at that point was able to see the light of his own Nafs which me and you also have if we manage to discover it and to let it be uh, emerging he was able to see that light and that light was you know covering whole world Ayatollah Tehrani says Allahumma rizqna oh Allah please give us this rizq that we also can witness this and this is the same uh, uh, stage of tajalli and nafs your nafs manifest and you can see as unlimited light and then he continues I think we uh, stop here and inshallah we can continue with Allah next week we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his salutations to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and to all these great scholars who with deep knowledge, understanding, taqwa and determination they not only themselves took this journey but also paved the way for us also to embark on this journey. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.